God is right and that he has moved us now into a place where we have to believe the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God. Again, this is Apostle Ellie Anderson, and we're with the Lighthouse Evangelistic Prayer Cathedral in the city of Los Angeles and worldwide. And today is our day of celebration, the Sabbath on the 3rd of September, Holy Communion and the Word of the Living God. Again, those of you that are on Facebook Live, you can come together with us this week through reading Proverbs chapter 17, verses 1 through 28, and Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 21, all this week. Those are the scriptures of choice to bring us into a place of understanding in the word of God. God bless our pastors today, Pastor Fur and Pastor Janelle that are online with us and our teacher, Evangelist Doris Gregory and our second teacher, Evangelist Francis Anderson and each one of you in our extended family. We greet you in the powerful and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that today is a day that is set aside now for the communion, a day that is set aside for to share in the bread and the wine of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want you to go with me today to the book of 1 Corinthians, to the book of 1 Corinthians. And we're going to look at chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. And I want you to hear what the Apostle Paul said through the revelation knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning Holy Communion. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. Paul said this, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Now I want you to hear me today. Here we see now that the Lord has come with his disciples, those who are with him and those who are not. That would be Judas of Iscariot. And the Bible said he brought them together on the night of the supper and he took bread. Verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now I want you to understand something this day. This body is now a symbol of the bread that he broke was a symbol of his body that would be broken through what? Calvary's tree and the punishment going up to Golgotha's hill. I want you to understand something today that it was not easy for the Bible said that Jesus went in prayer in the garden of Gethsemane and he asked his father, Father, is this what you really want me to do? But then he said, nevertheless, yeah. not my will, but thy will be done. Because he knew he came to the earth for one reason, and that was to be the perfect Lamb of God, to bring us out of sin and the penalty of death, and to bring us back into the Father's house. So his body had to be broken. So his body had to be brought into a place for you and for me. And we find that again in the book of Isaiah. And I want you to go with me right quick to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. And we're going to look at verse number 5. Isaiah 53 and 5. This is very important for you. It is very important for me. Isaiah 53 and 5. It says, For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Verse number 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I see you. Amen. So we are in a place now where we understand that this is the Lord God's work to send his only begotten son on the earth in due season that you and I might be brought out of the penalty of death 
and sin and brought into righteousness. Now notice verse 7, Isaiah 53 and 7. And I want you to hear me today. The Bible said he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And here we see him before Pontius Pilate. We see him now before the soldiers of Rome, slapping him back and forth, spitting on him and beating him. For who? Not for what he did, but for what you and I, the past, the present, and the future of mankind has done in order to be separated from the house of the living God. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He opened not his mouth. But he knew that he came to earth for this one reason, that you and I might be yeah. restored and brought back into the Father's house. And notice this, yeah. the verse number 8, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall yeah. declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Hear this, and I need you to hear me today. He came to die just for you and just for me. He came to die for the past, the present, and the future. And the Bible said he was cut off. Remember, it was 30 and 3 years that he lived. But on the 33rd year, he died for you and for me. And I want you to understand verse number 9 is prophetical. Listen, it says that he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth. Amen. And I want you to understand how much prophecy this involves. Remember that he was buried in Joseph of Amathea's tomb. Joseph was a very rich man. But guess what? Jesus was just borrowing this tomb for three days and three nights. And I want you to understand he was not put there permanently. He was put there on a temporary basis. Yes. And because of that, we come now again to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I want you to look again at verse number 24. It is important for you to understand about this body, this body that was born of a virgin, this body that was born through the Holy Ghost in the seed of the Virgin Mary, this body whose blood came from above and not from beneath, this body who was shaped in the form of man, but was very God. I want you to understand that this is a body that was being broken for you and for me. And I cannot overemphasize the fact that all of this was done, not because he sinned, but because the sin well, was on Adam and Eve all the way up amen. to 2022 and the future that is yet to come. Mankind, David said, was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. In other words, when we came into this world, we were already condemned by the word of God. And that's why today when we share in Holy Communion, you ought to rejoice. You ought to be glad that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so again, when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, the Bible says, And when he had given thanks, when he prayed about it, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. And that's why we're doing this every first Sabbath. Why? Because he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this because this is what I've done for you. Do this because in this, you and I become connected and become an intricate part of the Father's house. And then verse 25 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, after the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now again, first of all, the body was broken for you. The body was broken for me. The body was broken from the Garden of Eden to the very future of what it is for mankind to return back into the Father's house. But now we're looking at the most intricate part, not only the body, but the blood. And I want you to know we sang that song, What 
can wash us white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can bring us back into fellowship? What can bring us back into relationship? What can bring us back into a restored move with God is the blood of of Jesus. And so here he is now sitting down at the table yes. with his disciples, those that would deny him, mm -hmm. those that would betray him, those that would not believe him. Here he is sharing with them the remedy that will save them and bring them back into fellowship in the Father's house. And so again, let me read verse 25. After the same manner, what same manner? The same manner that he blessed the bread which was his body, after the same manner that he broke it, that was the custom for them to do, to remember him. Now he says he takes the cup, listen to me, and he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. What do I want you to do? Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Yes. Now what I want you to know now that is you cannot have a part of him until you accept him. Are you hearing Amen. me? You cannot have a part of him right. until you acknowledge yes. what he has done yes. in your life. You cannot have a part of him yes. until you realize that you were lost on your way to a devil's hell yes. and to the lake. But God sent his son in your place. He was the substitute lamb of God. Yes. Remember I read earlier in the book of Exodus that he said to the Israelites, you are to take a lamb without blemish, mm -hmm. a lamb without spot. In other words, this lamb had to be perfect in proportion. And you're going to slay it and you're going to save the blood. Why? Because you need to have it as a sign mm -hmm. for the angel of death that yes. is coming that if it's on the doorpost, then the angel will pass over you. I want you to know that same blood is in our heart and so death must pass over us. Yes, yes all of us are going to die physically yes. but the Bible said absent from the body present with the Lord yes. and so here we see now that the body and the blood <clears throat> is important yes. in our lives yes, and I want you to understand today that you need to understand something that this is all about him <laughs> and not about you. Amen. Let me say that again. This is all about him and not about you. And so I want you to understand today that we're in a place now where we must give glory and praise and thank God for the provisions he made yes. through his son. Yes. Listen to me. Now, verse number 26. He says, for as oft as ye eat this bread, which is what? His body. Mm -hmm. And drink this cup, which is what? His blood. He says, you show the Lord's death until he come. Now, here is something that's very important. This now is prophecy. He's saying that you're going to do this in memorial mm -hmm. until I come. Well, you say, Apostle, when is he coming? I can't tell you that, but I want you to be ready. And the only way to be ready is to continue to observe his body and his blood to continue to observe the laws that he has commanded us to follow. And notice this. He said his laws were not grievous. In other words, it's not hard for us to do. Why? Because we have the aid of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so I want you to know he said to them in verse 26, for as off as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death and when until he come. So now, I need you to move further to verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, how can we do that unworthily, Apostle? By not believing in the provision that the Father has sent his son by not believing that the blood of the son is sufficient to save to heal and to deliver you out of the penalty of sin and death by not believing that this is a god thing and not a thing from man All and right. so today i need you to understand yeah. that he said if you're going to eat this you're going to eat it how willingly you're going to eat it under the approval of the word of God. Yes. And you're going to do it to the point where everything else has to go. Somebody said you got to sell out. And when you sell out, you become empty so that he can feel and fulfill in you the abundance of life. Remember what John 10, 10 part B said. He said, I've come that you might have life 
and that you might have it more abundantly. Yes. And the abundant life now is the communion of God through his son via communion, bread and wine. Right, and so I need you to understand now, we need to do something that's yeah. very important. And that's found in verse 28 of the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And I want to go over this with you very, very carefully. He said, but let a man examine himself. Mm -hmm. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Listen to me very carefully. How do we examine ourselves? Right. We examine ourselves in the fact that we know that we cannot do it on mm -hmm. our own. That we have to confess that God raised Christ from the dead. And that he raised him from the dead on the third day. That you and I might be resurrected in the rim of the spirit. And so when we examine ourselves, we find out that we're nothing. Just dirt. Blow and we go away. Just like a flower blooms today, it's gone in the night. I need you to understand when you examine yourself, you begin to give praise to God that you were unworthy. You were a sinner, doomed and dead. But because he so loved the world and gave us his only begotten son, it now blooms us back into life yes. and brings us into the flow where the blood that's moving in us is not just the red blood going in our bodies, but is the blood from Calvary's tree. And so I want you to know that we need to examine ourselves and then we want to give God praise. I don't know about you, but I thank God every day. God, you so love me. Regardless of where I was and what I was doing, you brought me up and you brought me out into a wonderful place through your dear son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so listen to me. If you don't examine yourself, here's the consequences. Verse 29, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-nine: For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, right. eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, yes. not discerning the Lord's body. What does that mean? This is so precious. This is so awesome that the God of eternity knew that Satan was going to tempt Eve and knew that Adam would fall in deception. And so he made a plan before the foundation of the earth that he would save mankind and the devil didn't know anything about it. I need you to understand today that now that you have examined yourself, you begin to thank him that you have been found worthy, yes. not on your own, but through the move of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because you were so much into that, but because he so loved us in spite of all that we have done to lift us out of death and to bring us into life. So, the 30th verse is very important. He says, when you don't realize this, when you don't focus on what it is that God's plan is, he says, the 30th verse, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. And that word sleep is dead. Yes. Many have died yes. because they did not discern the coming of the Lord. They did not discern the move of Calvary. They did not discern the death, burial, and resurrection. They did not discern that he's coming back for us. And because of the lack of faith, they went back. But I want you to know today that as we get ready to share in this communion, we're going forward. Amen. As a matter of fact, the theme for this month is onward and inward. Why? Onward to the things of God, inward to the blessings of God that make it rich and add no sorrow. And so I want you to understand now, the Bible said this, listen to me very carefully, verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Isn't that correct? You don't think and nothing is wrong with what you're doing, but it's something wrong with what everybody else is doing. Remember what the book of Matthew said, chapter 18. First of all, you got to get the moat out of your eye before you get the beam out of somebody else's eye. You can't correct them until you correct yourself. And how do we correct ourselves? By humbly bowing before the throne of God, saying, Lord, I am a sinner. Save me by grace and give me the things that I need to bring life within me and eternity to come. And so I want you to understand now, look at verse number 32. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 32. Just want to talk to you today. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Can I just share this with you? I don't want to be condemned with the world because the world is going to be doomed. The Bible says the earth is going to melt with a fervent heat. And everyone that's not in the Lamb's book of life is going to be cast into the lake that burns with fire. That's the judgment of the world. I want to be judged by the things God has said. And what is that? His dear son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the world was no longer a part of my life. The Bible says to be in it, but not of it. And so today I want you to understand how important it is for us to understand what it means for real communion. I don't, I, I, listen, believe me today, this is not something we can just go through on a church service, take the bread, take the wine, hope, and it's over. No, you need to contemplate and think that this is the will of God to save you. This is the will of God to redeem you. This is the will of God to bring you out of destruction and to bring you into a place where you can live and live in this world and live in the world to come. By the memorial of bread and wine. Why? Because now we're looking back on Golgotha. We're looking back at what the Roman soldiers did. What did they do, Apostle? They nailed him in his hands. Yes. They nailed him in his feet. They put a crown of thorns, 72 thorns on his head, and they pierced him in his side. Why? Not because of what he did, but because of what we did, both in the past, the present, and the future. And so today I want you to understand that when we take this communion, I want you to get happy glad. Lord have mercy. Why? Because God so loved you enough that he was willing to come down in your place. That's exactly what he did through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was incarnated because first of all, he was in heaven. Yeah. He came out of heaven to the earth in 40 and two generations, born of a woman in due season that he might redeem us from this death and penalty of rebellion. And so today, this is why it's so important for us to understand what it is that he's saying to us in this lesson. Verse number 33, Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And that's what we're doing today, tarrying one for another, believing God that he's going to save your family, save those that are around you, save those in your house, save those that are on your job. We're tarrying and believing God that the door is going to open where they can see their sins and be convicted and changed in their personality to believe in the word of the living God. This is the day that you yeah. and I need to understand now that this is sacred. Let me say that again. This is sacred. Yes, this yes, is not yes, something yes. to play with. This is not something we do because we don't have anything else to do. This is something we do because we've been commanded yes, by the Lord yes. to as off as we do this in remembrance of him. He said that we would show forth his death, burial, and resurrection. And so today, let me read to you the next verse. Verse number 34, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. What is Paul saying? He's saying this is not a meal to fill you up. That's right. Are you hearing me today? This is not a meal to make you uh, happy and glad physically. Yes. This is a meal to make you glad spiritually. Yes. This is a meal that gives you the significance of the blood of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Let me remind you today, and I need you to hear me because this is so important. I don't want you to just think that this is a service that we have to do. No, this is a service we've been commanded to do. Yes. For yes. he says, as oft as you do this, you, who are you? The one, the other, the boy, the girl, the man, the woman, you show forth my death. You show forth my burial. Yes. You show forth my resurrection and my coming again. And so I want you to know today that this is not something that was just found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter <laughs> 11, beginning with verse 23 through 34. No, sir. This is also found in other parts of the scripture. Again, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 16, listen to me. The blood of Christ is mentioned specifically on four occasions 
in the New Testament and discussed in many other places, again in 1 Corinthians 10 and 16. And I want to go there right quick, and let's read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 16. It says, The cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? In other words, what we're doing now is in memorial of the Son of the living God. No, this is not his spiritual essence. This is in memorial. This is a cup. This is bread that we symbolize as an act of faith to believe that is what he has come to do for you and for me. And so today we need to be rejoicing that God so loved us. I cannot say that enough, that God so thought about us that even though he knew Satan was going to deceive Eve, even though he knew Adam was going to take Eve's part, he had already made a plan, according to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, which is the first prophecy in the word of God. God already knew what was going to happen, yeah. and he already knew what he was going to do. And so I need you to understand me today that Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 states, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So today, it's important for us to understand about this sacred blood, about this blood that has not been tainted, about this blood that has no blemishes. But this blood is the purifying blood of the Son of the living God that's going to cleanse, wash, and renew us. And we're going to do it through types and symbols with the cup of wine and the bread to believe what God said is going to happen when we begin to drink it and when we begin to eat it. Here, the blood of Christ refers to the sacrifice of Jesus that provided access to God and a relationship back with him. What are you saying, Apostle? Remember that when God came in the cool of the day, the Bible says the voice of the Lord came into the garden in the cool of the day, and he asked Adam, where art thou? Guess what? Adam and Eve had hid, yeah. and they had clothed themselves with fig leaves because they found out that they were naked. And I want you to know that this act that we're going to do today is going to restore us and bring us back into a relationship and into kinship with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of God. That's why it's important that I talk to you. I'm not yelling at you today. I'm not screaming. I just want to simply talk and tell you how important it is that when we get ready to eat, first of all, the bread and to drink of this cup, you need to thank God that he so loved you, that he was able to deliver you out of death and sin and to bring you back into relationship with him and his son and the Holy Spirit. And so I want you to know that we were separated from God. We had no fellowship. As I said on Tuesday night of last week, we were dead. Thank God he knew how to revive us, to restore us now and for the future and to give us life now and eternal life in the future. And so this is why communion is so important. And I want to take my time today and just let you understand how important it really is. We've been taking communion now for years. Hello. We've been taking communion on the first Sunday. For us is now the first Sabbath. We've been taking it and taking it, but not realizing how much it costs God that we would now be restored and brought back into the family of God. What did it cost him? It cost him his only begotten son. You remember when Jesus was on the cross, he cried out, My father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? Why? Because the father had to turn away when sin was brought in. The father turned away because he could not look upon the son who was now becoming what you and I should have been. It was you that should have died. It was me that should have died. But instead, he allowed his son to die for us. And that's why today we're going to rejoice. That's why today, in a few moments, we're going to praise God. That's why today we're going to thank God. Oh, hallelujah. For what he has done for us is over and above any human experience that you can have is that the Lamb of God shedded his blood for you 
and for me. Amen. Again, Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13 through 14, speaks directly about the importance of the blood of Christ as well. For the Bible says, For if the blood of goats and of bulls, and of the sprinkling of defiled persons, with the ashes of a heifer, specified the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal living God offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So today, think about it. I don't know about you, but when I think about it, I'm almost in tears to think how much he loved us to come down from the third heaven and be born in a woman to become flesh and blood that you and I might be redeemed in this life, brought back into a place where God could have his way and restore us now from where Adam and Eve fell, Jesus Christ succeeded. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory be to God. And so I want you to know today that the law is contrasted with the sacrifice of Jesus and the shedding of his blood, his death. The Old Testament sacrifices were a signification of Jesus' blood. That's why I read to you in Exodus what the lamb was, was just a symbol and a type. And I want you to understand today that we're going to celebrate. Hmm. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Christ because of what he has done yes. for you and for me. Again, in 1 Hallelujah. Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 through 19, we read, You were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. What are you saying, Apostle? Well, again, we go back all the way to Adam. We go all the way back to Eve. We were brought up and out, not with silver and gold, which perishes, but with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which signifies now new life. And the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And so today, on this third day of September, as we get ready to move now into that special place at the table, looking at what Christ has done, he's blessed the bread, he's blessed the cup. He told us to examine ourselves and come into the knowledge of what it is that he has done for us, in us, and through us. And so I want you to know today, in addition to these passages, it is clear that the blood of Christ poured out on the cross serves to cleanse us from sin. Hello, from sin. First John 1 John 1.7 teaches, but if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And so today, it's going to be a pleasure to get to that bread. It's going to be a pleasure to get to that cup. Why? Because it's the symbolic meaning now of all that he's done for you and for me. And so I want you to hear me today. The Apostle Paul especially focused on the blood of Jesus and its power. According to Romans 5 and 9, it teaches us we have now been justified by his blood. According to Ephesians 1 and 7, it adds, In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And by his grace we have been saved and delivered. And we're going to live again. Listen to me today. I'm so happy just to talk to you today. I'm so happy just to let you know how precious this really is. It's not something I want you to take for granted. But I want you to thank God the Father. Yes, yes. And thank God the Son. And thank God the Holy Ghost. That they were on one accord to bring man out. And to bring man back in yes. to fellowship with the Father and the Son. Listen to me. Again today when the Apostle John wrote to the seven churches, he greeted them with re reference to the blood of Jesus by saying, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who love us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, 
and has made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So that's why we're going to give him praise. That's why we're going to lift holy hands. Because he has done something that nobody else could do. He has done something that will bring you and I now to a place where if we're sick, we can be healed. If we're down, we can be lifted. If we're out, we can be brought in. The shed blood of Christ is the price of our redemption and the symbol of its completion is when we take the bread and when we drink the blood and believe all that the Father has done in the Son. And so I need you to understand me today because this is important for you to know. Communion is not something where we just wear white. Communion is not something where we just look at the table and then take this and do it. It is something now to contemplate and begin to thank God that I was a sinner. I was doomed on my way to a devil's hell and then into a lake. But the wrath of God was past because I looked to Calvary's tree and saw the son of the living God shedding his blood for you and for me. And so today, I need you to know that indeed under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. You have to allow the shedding of his blood to cleanse, to wash, to renew, to restore, and to return you back from the penalty of death and sin to righteousness and holiness. And so today I want you to understand that we're going to give this to you again because I need you to understand exactly what it is that the apostle is saying to you today. First of all, what the blood of Christ does for us. And then we're going to share in communion. So what is it that the blood of Christ does? Christ didn't just die on the cross and leave it at that. When he talked about the blood of Christ, we talk about it as an active thing, mm -hmm. a living thing that moves now into our flesh and revives and restores and delivers us out of the penalty of death. So today I want you to know, according to the book of Exodus and throughout the word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ redeems us from sin. That alone, you should praise God. For the next month, you should just be saying thank you that it was his blood, his blood that redeemed us from sin. Second of all, his blood purifies our hearts and our mind. Remember, this is where he dwells, the seat of our hearts, and he transforms our mind by his word. And he does this through the blood that he shed it on Golgotha's hill at Calvary's cross. And then third of all, he frees and helps us overcome temptations because now we have something to resist the enemy. We have something now to move forward in the things of God because we're being strengthened by the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need you to hear me today. If you never hear me again, hear me today. When we take this body and drink this blood, it fortifies us. It strengthens us. It renews us for until it is time to do it again. And that's why he says, as oft as you do this, you show forth my death, my burial, and resurrection. And as oft we do this, we're going to be strengthened. As oft as we do this, we're going to be undergirded. As oft as we do this, we're going to find the power to move forward in the things of God. Not only that, but the blood of Jesus gives us eternal life with him. Hello. When you take on his blood, it cleanses and fortifies the tainted blood in you. And eventually, when we receive a new body, according to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, when he uses the trump of the archangel and the voice to call us out of the grave into the air, that blood that he put in us is now going to fortify and renew and strengthen and give us eternal life where we will never die again, but we will forever be with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of the living God. Not only that, but the blood allows us to be forgiven of our sins because without it, without the shedding of blood, 
there is no forgiveness. And so I want you to understand how important this is. This is not just another first Sabbath service. This is not just another thing we want to do. This is something that is a commandment from God to bring us in close relationship to God. Remember my thing with fellowship is two fellows in a ship going in the same direction. And when we share in the blood, when we share in the body, we're in fellowship with the Father and the Son, and we're going in the same direction. Not only that, but the blood of Jesus Christ brings us peace. And I don't know about you, but when I look around in this world today, I thank God for his peace. Mm. Ah! which passeth all understanding. Yes, Lord, yes. Lord, have mercy. Yes. Killings and destruction, and all kinds of floods and different tsunamis and things all over the world. But I have peace because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, if you keep your mind stayed on him, he brings it into perfect peace. And I want you to know that perfect peace means no matter what I see, I know for what I know, the word of God is going to keep me and bring me into a place where I'm set on a solid foundation. Not only that, but I want you to know that the blood of Jesus gives us confidence that we're in the right place. We're doing the right thing. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Ask me how I know he lives. Because he lives in me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Not only that. But he clears our conscience. I don't know about you, but you know the devil whispers in one ear and you have to knock it out of the other ear and let him know, Satan, you have no part with me. My mind is made up. My head is lifted up. I'm on my way up. I'm going to the promised land. I'm building my faith on the table land, climbing every day and moving in relationship with the father and the son. And then this brings us closer to God. Hallelujah. We take a moment and just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Lord. For what you've done. Yeah. Ah, I wasn't worthy. Thank you. I wasn't fit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ready to die and not live. Yes, but thank you. Thank you. Ah, glory thank be to God. Lord. Thank you, sir. That it was you. Who yes. thought enough of us to come down Hallelujah. and to be incarnated as man, God, but God. yet very yes. God. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, the yes. songwriter said I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. Ah, yes. But you made death behave when I looked up and saw you on Calvary's tree. Death lost its power ah, and lost this thing. But I thank God today that as we get ready to share it, you and I now have been revived and we've been restored. Lord, I don't want to, oh my God. Hallelujah. God, I give you glory. And I want you to know now that this blood provides us with the power over evil. In other words, the devil has no more power over us. The devil cannot destroy us. No, all he can do is perplex us. But I want you to understand that in his perplexity, he's already lost because you have become the son and the daughter of the living God. Yeah. So as we get ready to pray today. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. As we get ready today to share in that body, I want you now to get the body right together. Get the bread so that we can bless it. Get the bread so that we can sanctify it. Get the bread so we can bring it in memorial to what he said to us. And again, let me share with you again from the word of God. Listen to me. Not what the apostle is saying, but what the word of God said. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, hear me very carefully. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And verse 25 follows that. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And so today, it is a privilege to get the cup. 
It is a privilege to get the bread. It is a privilege now to understand that he did it all for you and yes, for me. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so today, Hallelujah. I have the blood I share with the wife, and I have the body of the Lord Jesus Christ in this. And I want you to hear me today as we pray. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we pray in the name yes, of Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Christ yes, of yes, Nazareth, yes, who came all the I way can. down from the third heaven yes. to this yes. wicked earth to die in our place. And in death, Lord, I his remember. body yes. became memorial for us, for it was broken, yes. it was beat, yes. bloody just for us. And so today we pray over the bread that is amongst the people of God around the country and around the world that you would bless it that you will sanctify it for the use and for the nourishment that we might grow spiritually that we might grow mentally that we might grow physically to be strong soldiers in the word of the living God that this day will not pass until we have been renewed in the power and the anointing of the word of God because what you said, this was your broken body that was broken for us. And so today I give to the wife the bread of life and I take the bread of life and I ask you now to take the bread in your hand yes. and just give it a moment of thought and thank God thank that you. this represents, this represents yes. the memorial yes. of yes. his broken body. Yes. This represent the memorial of what it is he has done for you and for me. This represent the thing that will strengthen us and bring us now into a special place. Yes. And so let's take it and eat it together. Let's eat together in Jesus name. Amen. Mm. Eat all of it. Now, let's take the cup. And I want you to look in the cup today. What do you see? I see me, I see you. I see sin. And I see the blood covering that. Sustaining, reviving, and restoring. This is the body now. We hate the body. Now we're going to drink the blood. And believe God for the word of God that's in our lives. To know for a sure fact that it was the Father who loved the world so much yes. that he gave us his Son. And the Son who loved us so much that he gave us his broken body that was pierced and bloodied so you and I can be redeemed and go back to the Father's house. So, oh God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Glory Hallelujah. To As we drink together in Jesus' name. And he said, drink ye all of this. Now, I pray restoration. I pray deliverance. Hallelujah. In the body of clay today, yes, Lord. the word of God in the book of Psalms 107 and 20 said he sent his word to heal to deliver yes. and to bring out oh, of destruction. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That word we have just Thank taken you, in memorial through the bread right. and the wine. And so today, whatever your situation oh, might be, oh God, oh God. I bring restoration yes, to you, you through the word of the yes, living God. Yes, yes. Even in our lesson today, as he called Abram, he has now called you yes. to righteousness. He has now called you to holiness. He has now called you to live a life that testifies that it was him who gave us the strength and the mind to be transformed and live again. This is Apostle Ellie Anderson along with LEPC, Lighthouse Evangelistic Prayer Cathedral in the city of Los Angeles and around the world along with his wife Evangelist Francis saying to each of you, we have now shared in the body. We have now shared in the blood. Let's live this month, yes. the third day yes. of September, yes. through the 
of September, knowing now that we've been strengthened, knowing now that physically we have been given a new leech on yeah. life, knowing now that the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost is now in our life, through the obedience of the word of the living God. So you that are on yeah, Facebook yeah. Live, until I talk to you again, or see you in another Sabbath celebration, or on Tuesday night, when we share with you with Life Prayer Changes Things Ministries, this is Apostle Ellie Anderson saying to each of you, go with God. Amen, amen.